I cannot stress it enough. Your web pages need to have keyword optimized titles. Just because you think it sounds great doesn't mean people are actually searching for that term. I am on a journey to get better in all areas of my life, and I want to do it with you. Welcome to the Being Better Every Day podcast, where we dig deep into all the things a millennial mom needs to know, from how to juggle your passions with your full-time job, to asking the hard questions about hormones and health, and learning from one another along the way. I am Julie Wenslick, and as a mom, business owner, and corporate girly, sometimes life can feel like a lot. So join me in the journey of Being Better Every Day, where we create habits and routines that support your life, create calm in the chaos, and put the you back in your every day. Grab those headphones, put on your shoes, and join me on a walk while we get started with today's episode. Welcome back to the Being Better Every Day podcast. This is part two of the Small Business SEO series, where today we are diving into keywords because Candidly, this is where my SEO journey started. I thought that's what all SEO was, was just finding keywords and making sure that they were on your website. And I uh, have quickly found out that that is not all SEO is. However, it is a very, very, very important part of search engine optimization. So if you missed part one, make sure to go back and listen to the first episode, which is on what is SEO and the free monitoring tools that you should have set up. If you are joining me after listening to part one, thank you for not only listening, but being here and hopefully then sharing with a fellow small business owner to help my business grow. So today, as I said, we are diving into keywords and keywords are a way of telling search engines what your page is about. And the trick to this is balancing between high volume terms and more specific long term keywords and then making sure that you can then rank for competitive phrases while still catching those like niche searches that your audience might be doing. And I think when I first started this journey, thinking back to even the beginning of this year, I keywords were definitely something that just felt like you were throwing darts at a wall and seeing what stick, or actually throwing spaghetti at a wall and seeing what sticks. And I have since learned a little bit more about like the process and understanding and kind of the rabbit holes that that you can go down in order to help search. Now, one of the tools that I briefly mentioned on the last episode that I candidly use more than any other tool is Ubersuggest. There are other keyword search tools that you can absolutely use. And I will say I tend to use Uber suggests the most, but uh, I will mention the other tools that you can use as well because certainly Uber suggests, from a cost perspective, does have a cost to it. You can do three free searches a day. So if you are just starting to kind of look for things, or if you are just starting out, or if you're looking for a blog topic and kind of already know the direction you want to go, you can certainly use Uber suggest for what you need. Just again, knowing that it's limited to three free searches a day. So first of all, I'm not going to dive too far into these today, but I'm going to mention the names so you can look on them on your own. And that is the four SEO keyword research tools that you need or that you can use are Ubersuggest, again, free, but you only get three searches a day. Keyword Surfer, which is a Chrome extension, uh, which will show you certain things. It does not show you competitiveness as easily, and that is extremely important. Um, but it does allow you to show volume, cost per click, traffic, and word count, and then how many times a keyword is used in an article, which is also very helpful. Like I said, it doesn't show competitiveness, which is very important. Answer the public. This is one that I haven't used that much, but I would say if you're a blogger looking to answer the public, it can be extremely helpful when, for example, building your FAQs, right? So if I'm doing a a blog post on Pinterest marketing, I can I can do search Pinterest marketing on Answer the Public and it'll give me questions to ask um, or to answer, I should say, within my blog that will then help drive SEO. For example, I'm just going to kind of live go through this because I think it's important to kind of talk through what does that actually look like. So so for those of you on video, I am looking over on a second screen right now showing you what Answer the Public looks like. 
So on Answer the Public, I typed in uh, Pinterest marketing. So again, with Answer the Public, it actually recommends that you do one to two words, not long tail keywords, because you'll get more information out of it. So for Pinterest marketing, and I'm actually going to search maybe Pinterest manager instead, just for see if there's a higher search volume here. And with Pinterest manager, you'll get what this, what is called like a wheel. And I, I mean, kind of, it's just also really kind of creative to look at it, but with Pinterest manager, the average monthly search volume is 880. The cost per click is 579. We'll get to those metrics in a sec. But if I scroll down, there's six questions that people tend to ask with the word Pinterest manager in it. So if I have an FAQ section on my blog, I can answer how to become a Pinterest manager. How does a Pinterest man, how much, well, okay, these questions kind of suck, but how much does a Pinterest manager make? What does the Pinterest manager do, right? So there's certain things on here that I would actually want to answer. But if I would say Pinterest marketing versus Pinterest manager, right? The questions that I got from Pinterest manager were more people trying to get into the business. With Pinterest marketing, there's going to be, how can Pinterest marketing help my business? What is Pinterest marketing? How does Pinterest marketing work? How does, how Pinterest for my business marketing, that's bad English. How successful is Pinterest marketing? How to create a Pinterest marketing plan, right? These are things I could answer within my blog. So it's going to give you questions to think about, to answer in an FAQ section if you have a blog. Now, answer the public will give you search volume and it'll give you a cost per click. Again, it will not give you competitiveness. So let's back up here and talk a little bit about what does it actually mean when you are doing keyword research. So the metrics that you need to look at when you're looking at keyword research are things like volume. So every keyword that you're looking at utilizing, are you looking at optimal optimizing, unless it's your business name, should have a key or have a volume over 70. Or I said 70 because that's what the page I was looking at. I meant 100. So every keyword that you're looking at should have a volume over 100. And if your domain authority is less than 10, it should probably have a volume less than 3,000. Now, if your domain authority is above 10, then the volume could be above that 3,000. But what the volume means is how many people are searching for that term on a monthly basis. And you actually want to target between 100 and 3,000 if your domain authority is kind of less than that 10, because which mm -hmm. most new websites, their domain authority is under 10. Right. So if you're a new website, myself included, my domain authority is two right now, I think. It means that Google is not going to prioritize you above other domain authorities that are higher. So then you need to go for less competitive keywords. If your domain authority is above 10, which you can see that on your Uber Suggest audit, then you can kind of push that volume numbers up. But again, keep in mind the higher the volume, the more competitive, and therefore it's going to be harder for you to track. So for example, on my last episode, I mentioned that I had posted a page on SEO monitoring tools yesterday, and I'm already starting to rank for that search term. The volume on that search term is 780, right? It's under that thousand mark. And my domain authority is low. Now, the second thing that you're going to want to look at from a keyword perspective after volume is CPC. And CPC means cost per click. Now, if you're doing organic marketing, which is where, why we're here, Technically, cost per click doesn't count. However, cost per click is the paid marketing, right? Co average cost per click. So it means that people are paying, right? Ads to get clicks. Now, a cost per click above a or above a dollar means that there is value within that keyword. A CPC under a dollar means it's less prioritized from an ads perspective. And the reason you should care about that is if there's people paying for ads, then it means it's a good keyword. And if you can find one with low volume, right, a high CPC and a low SEO difficulty, then you found like your unicorn. Now, um, the other thing to think about is a lot of people don't like to click on ads, right? So if they're, if you can rank high on a, a, a keyword that has a high CPC, then you're more likely, right, to get clicks and be prioritized and, and kind of be right below that ad level. So the other thing with that is paid difficulty. Again, the lower the number. Well, I, so I don't actually pay attention to paid difficulty because I don't do paid ads. That's going to be something that's going to go into if you are doing ads, 
you need to make sure that you're prioritizing SEO keywords that have a high CPC and a low paid difficulty. And then from an SEO difficulty perspective, that's going to be your other number one keyword metric. So search volume is going to be number one. SEO difficulty is going to be number two to prioritize and CPC is going to be number three. So SEO difficulty, which is very easy to see it within Uber Suggest, again, you get three searches per day, is going to be the number that is basically showing you how difficult it is to rank for this keyword. Now, Keywords Everywhere also does this. I think Keywords Everywhere is free and it's a plugin, but SEO difficulty, generally you're going to want to target a number under 50. So for example, right, if you have a keyword that has a volume of 10,000 and an SEO difficulty of 79, unless you have a, a, a domain authority that's much higher, right, above 20 probably, you're not going to rank for that keyword. So keeping in mind that SEO difficulty is extremely important, I will use SEO difficulty keywords that are above 50, but then I pair them with something that is maybe lower volume, but easier to rank for. Again, those are the metrics you're going to look at. I've already shown you answer the public if you are online on video. And again, answer the public does not take into account SEO difficulty, right? So if you're searching for keywords, what you're really going to want to do from a process perspective is determine your long tail keywords first. What's going to go in your title? What's going to go in your head or subheadings? And then when you get those keywords determined, then you're going to go to answer the public to get your FAQ section nailed down. Because the more keywords, the more that you have a chance of ranking. But you also don't want to keyword stuff, right? If I'm going to use the keyword SEO monitoring tools, I'm not going to use it 15 times within the one copy. I'm going to use it maybe once or twice in key points, right, in my headers. And then use complementary value-based keywords that go along with that topic so that Google can determine that I'm bringing value to that content. So we've gone through Into the Public. SEMrush will allow you to do keyword research as well. SEMrush does have a free version. It is kind of hard to figure out how to get to it. So again, if you want to set up your free monitoring tools, I highly suggest you go over to my Instagram, julie.pwdesigns, and reply to anything with the word SEO, and it'll automatically get you on the email list. If you don't want to do that, the quickest way to do it is I will link it in the show notes, the direct link. Or if you want to type it into your phone while you're listening, it's P by PW Designs dot com slash SEO. That'll get you to my SEO services page. And there is an opt-in on that page for my SEO monitoring tools toolkit, which will give you, it's like a 20 page workbook of all the free monitoring tools and uh, things you should be looking at within each of those. So the other thing that I use or that you can use for Keyword research is Uber Suggest. Now I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to go through Uber Suggest. I highly recommend that if you kind of want to see what it actually looks like, that you head over to my YouTube and you and and look at the the video version of this podcast if you would like to see that. So let's get to it. So for those of you on video, we are over at Uber Suggest, and I'm in this keyword overview. Now I'm going to pick some random term fall recipes which I'm guessing is a pretty competitive keyword. Now, fall recipes is a what we call a short tail keyword. It is only one or two words. Long tail keywords are keywords that are longer than two words. So fall recipes has a search volume of 14,800, which is pretty high, right? And at current SEO difficulty, now I'll notice in Uber Suggest, you do need to hit update sometimes on the SEO difficulty because it'll be like older. So the SEO difficulty six months ago was only 25, right? Because people aren't searching for fall recipes in the spring. But then I updated it and now that SEO difficulty jumped to 71 because people are obviously searching for fall recipes within the fall. And this is when I'm recording that. The CPC is 26 cents, which means again, people aren't necessarily paying for paid advertising within fall recipes, which is not surprising. It's not necessarily something you'd want to you know, pay for. Now, uh, on Uber Suggest, it'll also show you the search volume on a cyclical basis, right? So it'll show you the last one year of search volume. And you'll see uh, uh, in October of 2023, there was almost 100,000 searches per month within that keyword. Now, the average then means it's 14,600 or 800. But for most of the year, 
the average search volume is under 200 a month. So, it, you know, these seasonal keywords can be beneficial, but you need to make sure that you're then posting your content in advance so that you can then have time for Google to pick it up. Because if I'm posting a fall recipes blog in November, it's too late. Now, it might not be too late for the following year, but it's going to be too late for this year. So one of the reasons why I like Uber Suggest is that it goes through other suggested keywords, questions, prepositions, and comparisons. So if I know, right, that obviously fall recipes is a short tail keyword, I have zero chance of, of ranking for it. I can click keyword ideas and then scroll down and kind of see other recipes that might be beneficial. So fall cocktail recipes, fall recipes chicken, fall recipes healthy dinner. Notice that these are longer keywords, right? Autumn recipes vegetarian might be a good one. There's only a 320 search volume average. And I am refreshing the SEO difficulty here. It is in the green uh, as of six months ago, but obviously it's probably not going to be in the green as of current day since we are recording this in the fall. But yep, so it came back at 64. So again, these are going to be difficult to rank for sometimes on a seasonal basis, but it will give you tons of ideas of uh, to other long tail keywords that you might want to target. So for example, right, my SEO services page, uh, I am targeting not just SEO because SEO is going to be an extremely hard page for me to rank for. So I am targeting from a keyword perspective, SEO for small business owners, right? Website audits, keyword research, you know, kind of adding in multiple keywords, SEO audit and optimization, organic SEO, not just the word SEO. So as just an example, uh, again, from an Uber Suggest perspective, there is a, so I have the paid one-time version. I think it's $400 for a lifetime, which is, I've, I've gotten a ton of use on it. If you write weekly blogs, I would highly suggest getting something like Uber Suggest. It's a one-time payment, but it can be extremely beneficial. The other tool that is free is uh, Keyword Surfer. So Keyword Surfer is a Chrome extension uh, for content and keyword research. Again, so is Keywords Everywhere is also a, a Edge and Chrome extension. Both of those will allow you to do research and see things right within the homepage of, of Google of how things are ranking from, from a keyword perspective. So if I look at my Google and I type in Pinterest marketing, because again, I'm just kind of targeting keywords that pop into my head as I'm talking, is So if I type in Pinterest marketing, you'll see that I have my Keywords Everywhere extension on right now. And the volume on Pinterest marketing is 1900 per month. The CPC is 108 and the competition is 0.09. Now, the way that their CPC works is a little bit different um, than mine. And so you'll notice that competition number, right, is obviously the lower the better. Now, You'll see long to SEO difficulty here is 92 over 100. So that's going to be extremely hard to rank for. But if I go down on the Keywords Everywhere plugin, you'll see people also search for it. And then you'll see all these long tail keywords and their volume. So I actually really like Keywords Everywhere. It's a free tool. It's not Uber Suggest. They do have some paid versions where you can get coins, et cetera, but it's a great way to get ideas for long-term keywords. So even if I'm going to search, you know, I can't think of anything else to search right now. So we will leave it at that. But again, so tools to think about as you're really writing content, as you're writing copy for your website, as you're writing blogs, anything long form, right? This includes YouTube. This includes podcasts. Anything that is long form, you need to be making sure that you're researching keywords. Here's another reason that this is important. Now, I do YouTube thumbnails for a client of mine who is a Pilates instructor. So she posts weekly YouTube videos and she has recently monetized. So it's important for us to make sure that she's getting views on her videos. And she had seen a drop off. And so I had said, hey, let me start making sure that your titles are SEO optimized. And so, for example, I have, so for example, uh, one of the workouts that we posted in September, originally the title was called Upper Body Band Workout Pregnancy Safe. 
And so what I did is I made sure with a new verse suggest to verify that there's volume for those keywords. So first of all, I tapped in upper body band workout and the search volume was 590. The SEO difficulty was 59, which is a little bit higher, but at the same time, she is, uh, she is monetized and does get good traffic on YouTube now. So I'm not as concerned about a, an SEO difficulty above 50. And then a CPC of 133. So then I typed in the other part of the title, which is pregnancy safe. Well, guess what? Pregnancy, pregnancy safe without an additional word came up zero in search volume because people are always going to be searching for something outside of just pregnancy safe, right? You're going to say pregnancy safe clothes. I don't know. Workouts, Pilates, whatever. Yoga. Um, it's going to be a third word. So I then edited her title to be pregnancy safe Pilates. And because of that, right, the search volume is 70 and the SEO difficulty is 17. So you'll see how I tied a harder keyword and an easier keyword together. Another way of looking at this is um, her original title for an, a workout that just dropped was called Full Body Pilates Flow, which sounds great, right? It's a full body workout that's clearly a flow-based workout. However, when I typed in full body Pilates flow to Uber suggest to get the volume, the search volume on that term is only 10 people per month. Well, obviously, we want more than 10 people to see this video. So Pilates flow has a search volume of 210, an SDL difficulty of one. So we've switched the name of the workout from full body Pilates flow to Pilates flow. And then there's like this little divider thingy full body, no equipment workout. And again, full body, no equipment workout has a search volume of 1900 and an SEO difficulty of 62. So we're tying, we're going from a name that would have only generated 10 searches per month to something that now has the opportunity to get over 2000 searches a month. So verifying your titles is just as important as the content itself. And this will go to, again, I cannot stress it enough, your web pages need to have keyword optimized titles. Just because you think it sounds great doesn't mean people are actually searching for that term. So using tools like Ubersuggest, SEMrush, you can use Google Search Console for this, although I don't use it that much. I actually find Bing Webmaster to be easier to use for, for keyword research and then answer the public and then as well as the free search engines or uh tools that I talked about, Keyword Surfer and Keywords Everywhere. Again, the reason I like Uber Suggest the best is because it does give you that difficulty number um, and you can do three searches a day for free or do the paid version for about $500. And that's $500 one-time fee, not $500 like every single year, which is kind of nice to have something that is, you know, a one-time fee instead of an ongoing fee. So, from episode one, I taught you what SEO is and the free monitoring tools that you should have. Again, please remember to download that free guide. Go to the link in the show notes and you can put in your email and it will be sent right to your email. And then on top of that now, we talked a little bit about keywords and how important they are and how long tail keywords are going to be where you need to focus. Now, keyword research is definitely something that takes time to learn, to finesse, to understand. I'm learning every day. Uh, but hopefully it gives you the basics of understanding what is a keyword, how to use your tools to try to st start to understand it. And I highly encourage you, anytime you're creating new content, you start with that. You start to understand what are the keywords that you're going to be targeting and then build the content from there. So again, SEO might seem complex, but once you break it down, it's all about optimizing your site, tracking the right numbers, and using your free tools in order to make small steps towards being better every day. Next time, we will cover kind of the on-page SEO, what you should be focusing on, what are the terms and, and understanding. If you have a web designer, making sure, or if you're your own web designer, making sure that these things are optimized on your websites. So until next time, keep on taking one step towards being better every day, including your SEO. And that's a wrap on today's episode of the Being Better Every Day podcast. Thank you for listening. I truly appreciate each listener. If you've enjoyed the conversation, I'd love if you would leave a rating and review or share it with your bestie to help me reach more women looking to ask the hard questions and live above that status quo. 
To see any visuals, head over to my YouTube channel. Links, socials, and resources mentioned can be found in today's show notes. If you're looking for more, you can find me on Instagram at julie.pwdesigns, sharing the behind the scenes of my everyday life as a millennial mom, corporate girly, and small business owner. Until next time, keep on taking one step at a time towards your version of being better every day.